Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, biologist at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Uh, welcome to our program. I just want to share a real quick case with you today um, uh, from the GI realm. Uh, it's a patient who's had a history of uh, rectal carcinoma. And as you may know, in uh, many situations today, uh, rectal carcinoma is um, treated primarily uh, with a combination of uh, surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. Uh, usually those follow in a sequence where the chemotherapy and radiation are given first, uh, particularly if the tumor is uh, more extensive than just confined to the mucosa. Uh, and then that's followed up with uh, surgical resection and uh, then uh, ongoing clinical care. Of course, anytime someone has had a uh, cancer, uh, the uh, vigilance is heightened to make sure that they don't have a recurrent uh, lesion. Uh, and that's what uh, motivated today's exam. So our patient, a uh, 60-year-old gentleman, had a uh, rectal carcinoma treated with neoadjuvant therapy, followed by uh, some surgical resection, uh, and then uh, is now in the follow-up stage. So uh, this uh, is uh, four, four biopsies from the um, perirectal area. Um, I don't know exactly uh, the, the distance in from where his tumor was, but it uh, illustrates uh, the point that I want to make. So as we look at this, uh, we see certainly no uh, immediate evidence of uh, tumor uh, recurrence or new tumor. Uh, the mucosa here looks to be uh, fairly unremarkable. The glands are parallel, uh, fairly closely spaced. There's a little bit of uh, superficial edema, some mucus, uh, as you can see here. Uh, and then maybe just a little bit of uh, variability, maybe some uh, surface uh, erosion and so forth. Now, sometimes with uh, chemotherapy or reactive states, uh, we can get an increase in uh, the glandular mucin, which you see here. Uh, and sometimes when there's been prior damage, we'll also begin to see shortening of some of these uh, crypts. Uh, that do not quite fully extend down to the muscularis mucosa. And as you see here, uh, there is an, uh, a gap between the muscularis mucosa and the rounded base of these uh, crypts. Now, looking at this a little bit closer, uh, we can begin to see that there may also be some other cells in here uh, that can occasionally present uh, concern. So, for example, here we see some... Uh, foaminess to some of the cytoplasm here of some of these cells, uh, and even maybe some cells that look like they could be the beginnings of signet ring cells here, as you see uh, some of those. And as we look a little bit further into this uh, biopsy, you'll see that this pattern is uh, repeated. Uh, here, uh, the glands do appear to uh, extend down to uh, very near the uh, muscularis mucosa, but again, we see these uh, cells within the lamina propria, here fairly prominent, as you see here, uh, quite a few of these cells, which uh, really are best termed mucifages. Uh, and so this is a characteristic hallmark, and what I wanted to point out uh, for today's video uh, is the presence of these mucifages in the setting where there has been uh, prior damage uh, to the uh, mucosa. Uh, and that damage can be from a variety of uh, possible uh, etiologies. In this case, we believe it's a combination of uh, some surgery and maybe also the radiation uh, changes uh, associated with that. Uh, and these little clusters of mucifages can mimic invasive tumor. They can mimic uh, granulomas, uh, such as might be seen in inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, as well as uh, uh, potentially even uh, metabolic disorders. Sometimes you may be concerned about lipid storage disease and things like that uh, with some of these uh, uh, cells that we see here uh, scattered around the uh, usually the base of the crypts, but sometimes also, as we've seen, uh, along the sides of the crypts. Now, going along with this is another hallmark of uh, damage, and that is this mild degree of pigmentation in the uh, lamina propria cells. So uh, what might be termed in some locations uh, a melanosis coli in conjunction with uh, these mucifages 
uh, may be another indicator of uh, prior uh, treatment damage uh, to the mucosa. Now, in reality, this has very little effect on the functionality of the uh, bowel, <clears throat> which should still uh, function quite adequately, uh, but it may be uh, an, an abnormal finding on endoscopy. Sometimes these little uh, mucifages like this can show up as <clears throat> little yellowish white uh, flecks in the uh, subsurface uh, mucosa, and, and hence they can be sometimes the, the uh, target of <clears throat> biopsies performed in this situation. So a very quick run through on some uh, uh, interesting microscopic findings, in this case associated with a known uh, etiology and uh, easily explained and correlating nicely with the uh, endoscopic uh, findings of uh, some slight uh, mucosal abnormality in this patient. So thanks so much for joining me and I hope that uh, we'll see you again on a future program. Uh, so until then, uh, may everything go well for you.